That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Violation, the directorial debut of Madeline Sims Fewer and Dusty Mancinelli, uh, which Shudder will be streaming on March 25th, 2021. Uh, notably, it premiered in the Midnight Madness section of the Digital Toronto International Film Festival in 2020. Uh, and it also played uh, at Sundance this year and South by Southwest, of course, all the digital festivals. We happened to see this originally um, when it streamed uh, out of TIFF. Uh, we did. We had filmed something that someone lost the footage of, uh, so we have. Uh, someone is me. Revisited <laughs> it, like someone else had access. <laughs> I I'm juggling a lot of things in my life. Same. Um, yeah, we saw this back in September. Yes. I well. And and we have rewatched it again. Yes. Which actually, I'm kind of happy how that worked out because I think <laughs> this kind of this film particularly works better on your second viewing. Yeah, so this is definitely a film that I think uh, it's probably good if it is spoiled. So then, sure, <clears throat> a person can focus on the details. The basic story is a woman kills her sister's husband at, after she believes he sexually assaulted her. Yeah, I mean that's it. It's a lot more complex than that, but yeah, the, yeah. the simple nitty gritty. Uh, yeah, but surprisingly, it's a very dense uh, narrative considering this on the surface this is what it is so the two there are two sisters miriam and greta miriam is played by miriam or madeline sims fewer who was the co-director writer producer so we find them in a cabin by a lake mm -hmm. so miriam is with her husband caleb greta is with her husband dylan when well we... at that time it's her fiance mm -hmm. dylan um they grew up with dylan sort of so Miriam is very familiar with her sister's fiance. We get the sense that Miriam and Caleb, uh, their marriage is not good. They, we find out they haven't had sex in a year. They seem very irritable towards one another. Very distant. Mm -hmm. We also get the sense that Greta feels like her big sister Miriam just thinks that she knows what's best for her. Mm -hmm. And she recounts a story about how when they were younger, some boy called Greta like, a slut or something and Miriam went to like the kids house and threw bleach in the flower bed and then all the kids picked on Greta so it had the opposite effect mm -hmm. and she cites that as an example of how she just like she just wants to prove that she knows what's best and really she's not trying to help her sister she's just trying to do it for herself so Miriam and Dylan go out for a walk while they're at the cabin uh, to go like hunting rabbits and they spend like all day out there, all night. Miriam, up to this point, seems to kind of be flirting with Dylan. Mm -hmm. She actually kisses him. Then in the morning, we see Dylan having sex with Miriam. And she appears to be not unconscious, but not like just... She's unresponsive. But I think the filmmaker is deliberately making it vague as to what's happening because we also hear Miriam's voice sort of whispering like, stop, get off me, but we don't see her mouth moving. We also hear Dylan sort of expressing like, it's very vague, which I think is sort of what's so great about this story. But ultimately, Miriam confronts Dylan about what he did to her, accusing him of sexually assaulting her. The next morning, yeah. And he's like, what are you talking about? You wanted it. You know, what are you, you, you did things to me. So, and she's, so it, again, it's vague. We don't know. It's, it's left, it's ambiguous. They are, they have both done things, but transgressions were made. I think that's clear at least, but it's ambiguous about the complicity either one have and how much this is a game one is playing. Right. The film also kind of flashes back and forth from the, the time at the cabin, flash forwarding like past the wedding mm -hmm. to some event, like maybe an anniversary party where Greta's very upset because Dylan hasn't shown up yet for the event. Mm -hmm. And that's when we see that a couple of days before, perhaps, mm -hmm. Miriam is at the cabin and she invites Dylan up. And it's basically for them to hook up. Mm -hmm. And he's super excited about it. She's being very strange. 
<laughs> like enough that I would have been like, you know what? I'm good. I'll see you at the party. Oh yeah, insisting that he drink all this booze that clearly has uh, something in it. But she um, blindfolds him, ties him up. Well, no, she just blindfolds him. She ties him to the back of the chair. Does she? Mm -hmm. Before she hits him? Oh. She blindfolds him, puts him in a chair. He's naked, erect, mm -hmm. very anxious to get this party started. And she bashes him upside the head with a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. She then proceeds to put a, like, duct tape his uh, breathing holes and put a plastic bag over his head. He is able to break free for a second. And he, like, in the struggle, hits her. She hits her head. But she, she ultimately, like... Um, strangles him to death face to face Luke. yeah it's a pretty gruesome scene uh she hangs him upside down bleeds him like a pig dismembers him mm -hmm. burns the flesh Check. takes the bones gr takes uh <laughs> grinds all the bones up like into dust and then drains the blood into like an igloo cooler and then fills like laundry detergent bottles with the blood and then goes to like a hotel to like dump, dump in the drain, the blood down the drain, and chunks of flesh down, flush down the toilet. toilet. Yeah, it's very, it's very methodical and gruesome. Yes, uh, it's very. To me, this is overall is like the de-romanticized rape revenge movie. And then she shows up to the event, so we, we kind of bounce back and forth, uh, and then she. The family must have a tradition where they make homemade ice cream. So Miriam is like, "I'll make the ice cream," and she puts some of Dylan's ashes in the ice cream mm -hmm. the end um and the last shot is her teary face and it's notably i think it's the second time that we we have to gaze upon her countenance as she's crying softly um yeah. which i think the other moment is important too so talk to me about the symbolism of the wolf because the film opens with us seeing a wolf it's he's a wolf with a um carrying the carcass of a rabbit in slow motion very some very beautiful cinematography from adam crosby lots of, of long lingering shots and a great moody score uh, but we we return to all kinds of uh shots in nature mostly of predatorial like type insects a spider there's one scene where she puts a spider under a glass as if to like move it somewhere else and caleb tells her um it's only going to bite you later on, so you might as well kill it. It's interesting because Miriam is bothered by the fact that her sister is, like, skinning an animal. She doesn't, like, eat meat. She doesn't want to kill anything. She doesn't want to kill the spider. But, um... But then she killed this man. <laughs> right, right. But I, I think that's important. I think we're supposed to... Uh -huh. uh, there are parallels with these things in nature. The violation is... There's a violation in several levels, metaphorically and literally in the film, but one is of kind of the natural order with what, you know, Miriam and um, Dylan kind of do to one another. But um, she's, Miriam's very upset that her sister has started to eat meat again under Dylan's influence. And there, and there's a, there's a screaming match where she's talking about how cruel it is to kill things, obviously, which be, Becomes quite ironic but I think Miriam has also neglecting to realize kind of the predator in herself she's repressed kind of the these she has found a way to interpret her behavior to satisfy her own needs and as her as Greta says in another key moment like you create a, a universe for yourself like with its own meanings yeah she says you create your own reality yeah so I think the big, so there are obviously two big questions. Was Miriam actually sexually assaulted or is she just <clears throat> delusional and wanting? Because I think that she seduced Dylan because she wanted a reason to tell her sister, see, your fiance is no good, you shouldn't be with him, and allowed him to have sex with her. So she kind of like set the stage for it to happen. But then in her mind, when we hear her say, stop, get off of me, She's kind of whispering it in her own mind, like she's thinking it so that she can feel good about the decision she made. I, I think ultimately this is it's really a fucked up sibling rivalry movie. But the second thing that I think that the big question is, is did Miriam plan to kill Dylan? Yes, I think, it, yes, when she lures him back there, she had everything prepared to, to do so. And I think for a minute, for just a second, she's second guessing. Well, no, her. there's there's a gap in time between when they're all at the cabin and this incident occurs to when she, Miriam kills Dylan. So I'm saying when she first 
you know, when, when the sexual experience happened back at the cabin originally, when she, when that happened to her, whether she allowed it or she was assaulted, at that moment, did she think I'm going to kill him? No, I think that she decided, I think this festered for a while, I think she decided this when she told her sister and she felt betrayed by her sister. Sure. And, and, and him to a degree, because when she confronts him, you know, the, the thing, it's compounded because the transgression is very personal. Like, they, she slept with her husband's, or her sister's husband, and he slept with her, um, his wife's sister. And so neither of them are, they, they kind of want to do damage control rather than, he, he, he's not really listening to her when she says that, I didn't say yet, like, I didn't give consent. I also thought there were some really cool shots. I think the score, like, it really, it works really well. The sound editing. Andrea Bocadero did the score. Um, we do see in this film an erect penis because when Dylan is tied to the chair, like, because Miriam is seducing him and he's very aroused, um, yeah, we see, like a, like, a lot of erect penis, which when I saw this back in September, I remember being kind of shocked because it's very rare in a movie that isn't, meant to be so explicit, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of films that are very sexually charged and NC-17 ratings, but this film, I was very surprised to see I was that. surprised, but it also feeds into the interpretation of that he at least believes that he didn't do anything wrong, that this was consensual. Right. Um, and and the, the way they dance around it too, because she brings up that night by the fire and he says something like, I thought you were fine with that. Um, my notes were, this is a tale of two sisters that's also about predators and prey, communication and consent, uh, sexual assault and murder. Um, and I think that it shows us in a way how repulsive it is to expect catharsis out of a, a revenge vehicle, much like the way Michael Haneke challenged us with funny games. Mm. Greta's hair is terrible. <laughs> it is terrible. So when we first meet her, like, it's in the past, like at the cabin, her roots are grown out like a year. So mm -hmm. she has like, you know, lighter brown hair with blonde highlights and it's very grown out. Then when we see her flash forward to like after they're married and like this event's about to occur, she has the worst haircut I have seen outside of like Christina and Mommy Dearest. And then it looks like her roots are touched up poorly. Mm -hmm. So my note was like, like, God damn, what did her hair look like on the wedding day? Because it looked terrible before the wedding. I think that's after. why it's like, that. that's why there's nothing wedding related happening based on how she looks. But Oh my okay. God, it's so bad. Did you realize that it, it starts out the game, if you remember? Not the first scene, but they're, they're, they're playing a game and um, Caleb says it's the oldest game in the world. Because I think Greta says it's pretentious. And I had to look up what that was. It's called Mancala. Okay. It's a strategy game where usually played with seeds or something where you're taking the opponents other things. Interesting. Well, that supports my idea that I think she she wanted Dylan to have sex with her so she would have like ammunition to like prove to her sister that I'm right. Your fiance is not good for you. But you know, you know what's really impressive is every every interaction, every play, uh, every response is um, gives us important information that, that changes how we read each of them as we go through this. Um, the, and I think another telling sequence, she puts on that wig, Miriam, and goes to the hotel to dump parts of him. And it's really one of the only exchanges with other people where she, she um, interrupts a domestic bis dispute between a man and a woman and gets in a screaming match with a man. And the wife has to say, you know, don't talk to him that way. Leave us alone. <laughs> Yeah, because she's meddling in other people's business. But, but again, to, because of how she feels about herself. And to go back to the crying, to the twin crying sequences, we see her confront that wolf from the beginning who's kind of, uh, who's growling at her as she drags the rabbit carcass and she's, she cries in response to that. And that is the final shot of the film is when everybody's eating that ice cream. Yeah. Um, when there's a scene where after Miriam and Dylan are, have had sex and she's confronted him, so she's salty, Dylan's nervous, M Greta and Caleb are sitting, talking, and Miriam is real funky. And she sort of questions her, because Greta is like, uh, like skinning a rabbit 
and then she explains like this was really therapeutic for her to learn how to do this and then Miriam keeps pressing her like why why what about this it has been such a like learning experience and she says that she basically learned that she didn't want to rely on other people to do things that she's not com comfortable doing herself yeah she didn't need anyone to take care of her yeah Which, so Miriam right um, my final note about this film is that it, it felt like like the missing pieces of a Dateline episode. Sure. Like when we hear about <clears throat> like the heinous crimes people commit out of passion or, or jealousy or just being downright crazy. But then we don't get the interiority of like why the people do the things they do. I feel like this, this movie is the, those missing pieces. Mm -hmm. Because there really is no... The movie's long. It's like an hour 45. And it kind of feels a little long, but... Sure. Um, but it's... At no point after she... Well, even... Well, because I already watched it, so I knew she kills him. But um, at no point did I sort of worry or wonder, like, is she going to get caught? No, actually. Which but, is very interesting. But I, I think that added to the level of... I, I thought that she wouldn't based on the... Um, the elaborate way that she was disposing of his body. I'm like, she probably won't get caught. Um, and I, I think that adds to this troubling sense of it. You're not supposed to be comfortable at all. I don't right, know it really... adds to the discomfort of watching this person. Because, you know, talking about, like, revenge, and then you mentioned, like, I spit on your grave. And it's very easy to root for the main character because she was brutally attacked by a number of men who just very service level were obviously terrible people. Yeah. So when she seduces them and kills them, it's like, you know, I'm not like cheering, but I'm like, well... They deserved it, yeah. I mean, that's what y'all get. This, but in this film, it's like, well, even if he did take advantage of her and sexually assault her, what she does did, did to him is not... Does not justify the means. No. Yeah. He needs to be, you know arrested and tried and you know he needs to serve his time for you know this crime he committed against this person but so so it's very interesting well at least see even at least made to feel the heat of you know as soon as a man says that I, you led me on you did it and a woman just usually has to deal with that i i think it's feeling the heat of you have to explain yourself you can't just say that that's that she wanted it Right, and his reaction to her was like, oh, dismissive. This yeah, is dismissive. The... It's just, <laughs> you need to do a little bit more to... Yeah, and you know, listening to the director speak about it, they wanted to make a film about an anti-heroine, like a woman who's kind of incapable of doing the right thing. Like, you know, and I think they had compared influences to like Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver or Bad Lieutenant Harvey Keitel. Miriam uh, is played very well because that character did a very good job of making me uncomfortable. Yes. She's, like she yes. just has that look in her eyes like even when they're in the lake and you know they're in their like floaty noodles like her and her sister and Miriam's like I need to tell you something. And it's just like the way she says it is like oh here yeah, we the, go. That's kind of played perfectly. And, yeah. And you know as is after the um, night by the fire she basically violates her husband, Caleb. Yeah, because she hops on him wanting to have sex and he has to push her and off. he's like, no, him. you're drunk. I don't want But to. every look in Miriam's face is just like, she just seems like she's she wants a reaction. Like, like, like she's pushing buttons and she's trying to like rile people up. And it just made me very uncomfortable. But at the same time, that made me feel kind of bad for her because she... I think she feels probably, em I'm assuming that she feels empty inside and that the one thing that kind of gave her joy and meaning was, you know, or one of the things was being useful to her sister is no longer something that she can define herself with. It's no longer an identity for her. Because mm -hmm. um, she keeps saying, let's start over. There are two key sequences too, where she want the one with that floaty thing in the pool right before she says what happened. She's like, let's start over. Let me move here. Let's start over. And then later on, uh, <clears throat> before the event happens, she she says the same thing when the laundry's being hung up like mm -hmm. that. Let's let's start over. But she doesn't want anybody else to start over because she brings up how Dylan used to tear off the the wings of flies as a child. It's like what an insane thing to yeah. hold against someone from when they were a kid. But I'm getting sleepy. What would you give this movie? Uh, three and a half out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Thank you. Bye.